Did you miss me? What's up? I'm back. Hey. Howdy. How's it going, everybody? It's 11.25 p.m. currently, and there are people sleeping. And maybe this isn't the best album to listen to when people are sleeping, but it's okay. You'll, you'll deal with it. You'll be fine. But today I'm checking out the new Knocked Loose album. You won't go before you're supposed to. Only song I've heard off of this is Blinding Faith. I got a video on that if you want to go check that out. Let's check out this album. Only 27 and a half minutes, so it's not that long, which is about a good length for a Knocked Loose record. I don't think there's lyrics to any of these besides, I don't know, maybe some of the, maybe some of the singles, but we'll see. So I'm just going to keep this here. Uh, I'm too lazy to put something else here, so deal with it. Let's go. Track one. <laughs> Expected. Yep, it, it is. It's not loose. Oh, I thought it was going to get slower. Now it gets slower. Here's the breakdown. It's like a delayed breakdown. <laughs> my left ear is ringing. I don't. I don't think that's part of the song. I think my ear is just ringing. Okay. I mean, I mean, what can I say about that? It's uh, the title track. I mean, not a title track. It's an, I've been out of the game for a month. Uh, oh, 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 I need to get back into this. That's that's an intro track. Yep, that is the intro track to a Knocked Loose album. That's about how I expected it to go. Let's keep going. I don't even know why I have my keyboard. Like, am I really going to need it? Ooh. Yeah, it's about as expected. Nothing crazy, but it's good. Here we go. Now you now you start punching things. Classic knocked loose. Yeah, it's it's okay so far. It's knocked loose. I mean, it's only two tracks, so it's like the beginning of the album. Uh, there's nothing really that stands out to me. Finding Faith had that cool like ding 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 with like the 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 snare tap thingy that was like really really cool in the beginning. Um, and then I had that in like later, but it, I, there's not really anything here that stands out to me. It's just kind of like, yeah, this is, this is knocked loose. Uh-huh. Yep. And the, here comes the breakdown there. It, yep. Yep. Punch some things. Yep. There we go. So I don't know. Maybe that will change as we get into some of these other tracks. Actually, I did hear one quote unquote spoiler. Somebody said the outro was good. That's all I heard. I don't remember if I've heard anything about this. Like specifically, like what Poppy does. I'm assuming she screams on this album because she's done screams before. I'd be surprised if there were cleans. This is more interesting. Yes, Poppy. Yes. Ooh. Yo, her vocals work really well with this hardcore style. Poppy breakdown? Is Poppy taking the breakdown? Ooh. Let's go, Poppy. Wow. I love her heavier side. Oh. That's disgusting. <laughs> Ooh, it's it's kind of it's kind of bouncy. It's kind of got some groove to it. Oh, the symbol, let's go. That was good. That was good. That's a good one. I like little silence breaks in this one. Ooh. That snare sounds like a barrel, like a like a, a metal barrel. Clang. Ooh. Did not expect a, a pick it up breakdown. 
Are we getting slower now? Yes. Yes, we are. So, so far, I think the last two tracks were, were better. The Poppy one is my favorite of the newer ones. I think Blinding Fate still clears all of them musically. Um, but it's not, it's not bad. It's just, just knocked loose. I mean, this kind of stuff, like this sort of hardcore, like this and, and boundaries, which I'll, I'll listen to that album soon too. Um, but they're never really something that I would put as like my favorite albums of the year, favorite albums of all time or anything like that. They're just, they're, they're just solid albums that I put in like the, yeah, these are, these are good kind of tier. I'm trying not to sneeze. This could go hard. This may go hard. This may or may not go hard. Let's find out. Some bass? This does go hard. Oh, d bro, come on. Give me the... There it is. This is musically the most interesting one so far. This is so weird. This is so different. Is this gonna transition or is... Okay, 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 all right, all right. we can just let her us too. Dare I say my favorite song? That was very weird and very experimental for them. And it it paid off. That was that was a very interesting track. I mostly just love it because of how weird it is. Some stuff sort of happened and then it kind of felt like it was building, but then it kind of crunched the build up and ended. And then it shifted to like Fallout Radio for a second. To some like Yeehaw Appalachian folk music. I love Appalachian folk music, by the way. That's one of my not not really guilty pleasure genres because I don't feel guilty about it, but like something that I don't widely broadcast to everyone that I listen to. I'll put on some like like some of that mountain country music from the 1800s. I'm like this this goes hard. This is fire. Some banjo twanging like that that kind of music. Love it. I want to look up the this breakdown just to remind myself how it goes again. <laughs> And then there's like the, yeah, the little squelchy sound at the end. Classic. By the way, Masterpiece is probably the best song on this album. Slow as two, let's go. No lyrics. How does it compare? Alright. It is Slaughterhouse 2. Ooh, they got the click track in there? <laughs> Is it still building? Is it still building? Nice. Okay, thank you, Chris. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> he said he said the thing. He did the blah. There you go. That's that's slaughterhouse too. That's kind of about what I expected. I think they, um, they being motionless and white, they kind of did a similar sequel song thing with uh, Undead Ahead, and then the the second one like had a very similar breakdown. I I think it had a very similar breakdown. It's been a while since I've heard those two songs, so now I guess they're continuing the the sequel song thing. That was that's good. I still think Take Me Home is is my favorite track so far. Right now it's like Take Me Home, Blinding Faith, Suffocate. And then the other ones are kind of all just on the same level to me. I mean, Slaughterhouse 2 is, is okay. I might, I might put that under Suffocate, but yeah. Don't Reach For Me. And then the first two were all kind of just on the same level for me. Okay, this is, this is a corn riff. Nice. This is different. I love the different stuff. I love when they do different stuff. 
because I feel like Noctilus is very predictable. See, now we're back to the predictableness, which isn't bad, but sometimes I want something a little more. Oh. I'm such a sucker for 6-8, I've said this a million times before, but anything in 6-8, I'll take it, give it to me. The beginning and the end of that were, were really interesting. This riff still goes so hard. Yeah, th this still clears most of the other songs. Except Take Me Home, purely for the weird novelty factor of it. This part's really good too with the... <laughs> oh, it's so good. I, I'm wrong, I'm just... I tried to show off by showing that I know the song, but I, I don't, apparently. A moment of calm in a knock loose record? I swear, I almost said locked noose again. That's interesting. It's like... Something, something like that. He said the thing. He said the thing. Nice. That was kind of creepy, not gonna lie. Let's talk about this. I think overall, it was, it was, it was, it was it's pretty okay. It was, it was a pretty alright album. I don't think it's making it into my top albums of the year for sure. Uh, but who knows? That could change. That could change over time. But overall, it uh, was not the worst thing I've heard. It was, it was enjoyable. It's listenable. It's fun. It had some cool moments. It had uh, like Take Me Home. Blinding Faith is good. The ending was, was cool. I think it was a little kind of just... It happened. I don't really have any strong feelings either way. It's kind of how I feel about the whole album. I don't really have any strong feelings either way. Like, I don't love it, but I don't hate it. I am back to ranking albums. So I've created uh, my own little scale, kind of like the way that Steve OG does it. I'll come up with like a graphic for this and put it up to on the side and like, you know, have the whole sort of something will happen. Um, but just for now, I'll tell you. My scale is Masterpiece, Banger, Goes Hard, not bad, not for me, and at the very bottom, actual dog water. So that is the scale. There's six different categories. I think that's good. The reason that I prefer this, and I talked about this before, but if you haven't heard me talk about it before, the reason I prefer something like this over a pure number ranking is that this, I feel like there's more room for flexibility and a number ranking is, sort. it sort of boxes an album into a number. Like, an 8 out of 10 pop album is going to be very different from an 8 out of 10 deathcore album. But putting them into these categories that I have made, it feels like it's a bit more manageable, it's a little more malleable. It's more of a description of the album than an actual ranking, I think. I would put this, again the tiers are Masterpiece, Banger, Goes Hard, Not Bad, Not For Me, Actual Dog Water. I would put this at not bad. I will have uh, an episode of my little like podcast thing where I talk about how my opinions have changed on music. Uh, I only did one episode of that, and that was a while ago, so I have a lot to cover on the next episode. It's going to be a long one. And I'll bring in this ranking system, and I'll kind of rank all of the albums that I've heard so far. Uh, albums, singles, whatever. Anything that I deem noteworthy. Anything I made a video on, really, I'll, I'll talk about. I will catch you in my next video, which will not be a month and a half away. Uh, thank you for watching. See ya.